Hello, auditing. What is it and why do we need it? Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. At the end of this, we will be able to explain the need for audits, understand what independence means in the context of an audit, define assurance services, and explain what financial reporting framework is and how it is used, as well as list and define the types of test engagements. All right, so why do we need audits? So why do we need an audit? Basically for trust, trust is going to be the main service that we're gonna have for the audit. For example, if we think about a company and who they're gonna do business with, they're gonna have transactions with, could be end users, end users like investors. Investors, if you're talking about a publicly traded company, more and more that's gonna be just normal people who are investing and they're putting their money into the company. The company wants those investments, of course. If we talk about banks, we can think about banks in terms of a company possibly could need a loan and they're gonna want the, that transaction. The bank, of course, wants to provide the loan because they're gonna make interest on that. The government, government, the company may not wanna do business, but they have to do business in terms of taxes in some way. And the government, of course, uh, is, is gonna have a need for that as well. So when we, we wanna have these transactions happen, but notice what, what happens often is that what will limit a transaction is if there's no trust. If the investor wants to invest in the company, but they don't know if the company is going to be pro profitable, then the investor doesn't, doesn't know if they're going to put the money in there. If the banks don't think that the company will be able to pay back the loan plus the interest, which is the way they're, why they're giving the loan in the first place, then they're less likely to give the loan. So what can the company do to give more trust? Well, the investors, the bank, the government are going to ask for, of course, financial statements. They're going to say, hey, why don't you give us some financial statements? Tell us what your profitability is. Tell us how you're doing. And then we're more likely to give you uh, what we what we want. We can do business then. The investors can then put in money and invest. The banks could give the loan. The government can uh, process their taxes. And But still, we still might have a problem because the, the investors, the users might be saying, hey, the company has an incentive to maybe not uh, provide financial statements that are correct or they might provide financial statements that are not correct in terms of what the end users are thinking in terms of the procedures or how it was created was it uh, made in accordance to some standards there could be errors on it so the end users still may not fully trust the financial statements and that's of course where uh, the cpa firm comes in with the audit and the audit then should give some level of assurance that the financial statements which are created and the responsibility of the company are correct in accordance with some agreed upon standards. So that's going to be the idea. The financial statements are then go to the CPA firm, which then could go to the end users with some more type of verification as to the reliability of the uh, financial statements in some way. Now, of course, there's pros and cons to this type of transaction because that CPA firm, that trust, that added trust is the benefit. That's hopefully going to say, okay, now we can have more transactions happening because there's more transparency. The end users are more confident in what the company is providing. And therefore, there's, that's going to facilitate more transactions. That's huge. We want to have openness and, and transparency in order to have more transactions. Of course, the, the downside of that is that it, it's going to cost more money in order to do this. In order to have the CPA firm go in, if you're talking about audits of publicly traded companies, that's a lot of money to, to process those audits. So there's a, there's a pro and, and a con of that, but the idea of it is to facilitate the transactions, to provide the trust needed for people to do business, and that's gonna be the concept of the audits. So why would we trust the audit, you might ask? What, you know, what is it about an audit that makes, makes the audit process a more trustworthy process? Well, these, the idea of independence and a, and a third party, an independent third party, is a key component of why we would trust an audit. For example, if we have the company and the end users, they're doing business, they want to do business, A and B are doing business, 
C over here is not involved in the immediate transaction between A and B. So if we were if we were to do business, if you had two people doing business and you had a third party, possibly someone who's a friend of both of you or someone that both of you do not even know, then you might say, hey, this, this person has no uh, relation to the transaction we're doing. Therefore, their, their opinion is objective and let's rely on their opinion then. And of course, in this case, we're relying on a third party who, who is a professional in one that they should have the, the knowledge in terms of whether something is correct or not. And they should have the standards in this case being a, a CPA regulated by the, by the regulations to act independently. So that's kind of the reason we would trust the third party. So independence becomes a huge thing. Now, no, you might be thinking, well, how does the CPA firm get paid? by the company that's <laughs> right so you're gonna have you might be thinking well there's a kind of a problem that is a problem that's why independence becomes so important because you know we need to have some regulations some standards to regulate the the cpa firm profession in in order to remain independent so if we had other problems if if you know the um, people on that were doing the audit were also part of the board of directors or were part of management of the company then clearly they would not be be uh, independent and we'll take a look uh, at a lot more kind of rules in terms of what makes someone independent, what makes someone not independent. And we want to be independent both in appearance and, and in actuality uh, so that we can be someone that both parties can rely on in this transaction. What are assurance services? So categories could include uh, provide reliability or we can have organizing information into certain form or context. We're going to be focusing on the providing of reliability. That's the most common idea of the assurance. When we think about the financial statements, we're usually uh, having the, the confidence in the financial statements. What does it mean to provide reliability? So attest services are a subset of assurance services. So we're going to talk about attest engagements. Uh, we want to provide assurance as to something's reliability. So that's going to be the basic idea from the broad sense. We're providing assurance as to something's reliability. Usually financial statements is what most people think of. Uh, some kind of review of subject matter that is the responsibility of another is another way to put it. So again, we usually think about the financial statements, the financial statements being a responsibility of the company and the uh, assurance, the reliability, the reliability, the assurance, the attestation engagement is to give some type of reliability on those financial statements which are the responsibility of another we could give uh some kind of insurance on, on other stuff like internal controls and other types of things as well what type of subject matter can be reviewed so it could include financial forecasts it could include uh, internal controls which is a huge one these days it could control uh compliance with laws and, and regulations so there's a lot of things that besides the financial statements that we could actually have uh reviewed and give give an opinion on in this way or give some kind of assurance in what type of standard should a review be based on so generally established by groups of experts so when we think about the the standards when we think about if we're taking a look at something for example the financial statements then we of course need to compare that to something we need to say okay how is this thing going to relate how do we know how can we give assurance well, usually we're going to find some standard standards that we're going to take a look at. Standards usually being created by experts. If we're talking about financial statement audits, standards set by financial reporting framework. So if we're talking about financial statement audits, usually the thing we look at when we're looking at audits, we're looking at some kind of uh, framework, the financial reporting framework to go by. Normally, that's generally accepted accounting principles, GAAP. So normally, in a normal audit, we would say, hey, uh, here's the financial statements. We're going to dig down on them and see if they are in accordance with the rules, the generally accepted accounting principles. Do they adhere to the generally accepted accounting principles? Now, note, if, if we could have other standards, though, uh, financial reporting frameworks that we're looking at. So, for example, if you're getting a loan from the bank and the, and the bank is willing to accept a cash basis or willing to accept financial statements that in, are in accordance with the tax code, then that might be good enough. We might be saying, OK, now we're reviewing this in relation to the financial reporting framework of the IRS tax code or a cash basis. So uh, how is financial reporting framework used? So a CPA firm performs an audit in order to gather evidence to issue an opinion on whether financial statements follow the financial reporting framework. So when we think about if we're thinking about GAAP as the financial reporting framework, then of course what we're going to do is say, okay, how can we prove 
that the financial statements are in accordance with GAAP, well, we're going to go and we're going to try to gather evidence. We're going to basically make a case for it. And, and then we're going to give an opinion as to whether they do conform or they don't conform based on the evidence that we're going to draw. So what type of, of attest engagements are there? There's going to be examinations, there's reviews, there's agreed upon procedures. These are going to be the most common items. What's an examination? Usually that's an audit, an audit when involving historical financial statements. So when we think about examinations, we're generally thinking the audit, and that's the highest assurance uh, CPA can offer. So that's when we think about an audit, that's the highest assurance. Now, no, we're not talking about IRS audits, tax audits usually. When, we take, when we're talking about financial statements, we're talking about uh, the assurance of the CPA assurance of the financial statements generally. That's going to be the context of the audits in this case. So what's in a review then? It's much less in scope of procedure than an examination. So an, an audit is going to be the highest examination uh, that we can have. A review is going to be much less. So we're going to do a lot more digging. We may not do, you know, go out to the, to the company's site as much. It's going to probably involve a lot more testings that are in-house ratio analysis, things we can do in the office. And therefore, it provides only limited assurance. So sometimes that might be all you need. If you're, if you're talking to the bank and you're looking for a loan, or whatnot, a company needs a loan, maybe they don't need an audit. Maybe they just need an assurance. Maybe they don't need us uh, digging into a, to a full audit. That would cost a lot more money. If the bank only wants uh, reasonable assurance with a review, then uh, that may be appropriate in those cases. Of course, a publicly traded company is required to have audits. Non-publicly traded companies may have many types of situations where a review would be a good way to go. Now, let's, let's take a look at a chart here. So if we had an examination, we're saying the assurance level is high. So we're gonna say, we're, we're given high assurance that the, that the financial statements that we're talking about in audit are, are correct. That means that the, that the risk of a material misstatement is low. So if we look at the financial statements and you say, uh, what are the odds that there's a big misstatement on the financial statements? Well, if it's been audited, the risk of, the, of a material misstatement, a misstatement that would be uh, relevant to decision-making is low. It doesn't mean there's in, not immaterial misstatements, but if it's immaterial, it shouldn't affect the decision making. So uh, assurance report, we're gonna issue a report for these things and usually if we're talking about an audit, somewhere in the standard report that we'll take a look at later, it's gonna say in our opinion. So that's gonna be, it's gonna be in our opinion, it's gonna be part of the report. Uh, procedures, we're gonna choose from all available procedures, in, uh, any combination that, that can limit risk to a low level. So we're gonna do a lot more procedures in, in the audit. We're gonna do the analytical procedures. We're also gonna pick from procedures that we think can lower the risk. And that could include, you know, going out to the actual site and digging through things like invoices and whatnot, and actually, you know, observing things and whatnot. And then we have the review. And remember that a review is a lot less, so we're gonna have the assurance level is only moderate. It's not as high a level of assurance if we're doing a review as opposed to an audit. Therefore, the risk of material misstatement is moderate so if we're looking at the financial statement what's the risk that there's a that there's a material misstatement well it's it's, it's moderate it, you know there's a higher risk than if we did a full audit and an examination if we do a report a report would say something like we are not aware of any material modifications that should be made so you can see that that's a lot more kind of lawyery and in not giving uh, a full assurance there in that so we're given a reviewed opinion there and notice we're never going to say in the report that we guarantee anything because that's legally uh, not a smart thing to do because it could expose to liability. So in this case, we're saying we are not aware of any material modifications. All right, so often limited to inquiry and analytical procedures. So what are we going to do in a review? Usually it's going to be more of the stuff we can do in the office. We're going to do, you know, ratio analysis probably and uh, compare the numbers from last year to this year. We're going to do some, some ratio analysis in there and see if there's uh, unusual circumstances, unusual information. We're probably going to do a lot less of going out to uh, the company and digging through and doing uh, more observations and that type of thing in the review process as compared to the audit.